Welcome to Mastering Skills for a New Way of Working. These sessions have been developed by Developing the Young Workforce in collaboration with educators and employers and aims to give you the information and tools to become more informed about the changes to the world of work as a result of virtual working, to develop the skills you will need to work virtually, to be ready for working virtually and ensure you focus on your well-being. The first part of this session will set the scene for virtual working, covering what is virtual or remote working, practical examples of how this has impacted day-to-day -day tasks and thoughts for the future. Firstly, what is virtual working? You may know someone, a family member or a friend who is working virtually and what this means. Virtual working is when employees carry out the tasks required of them in their job individually from different locations, usually a home environment, rather than carrying out their tasks all together in a central office location. This has resulted in a much larger focus and reliance on technology for most businesses to enable employees to do their job effectively and stay connected with colleagues. Did virtual working exist before COVID-19? In March 2020, due to COVID-19, the government instructed all non-essential businesses to close and employees were asked to work from home. Some businesses supported employees in working from home pre-COVID-19. However, this was not the norm. COVID-19 has forced businesses to put provisions in place to ensure that their employees can carry out their job effectively from home. For example, providing laptops, phones and chairs. So what is the impact of working virtually? Since moving to virtual working, many elements of day-to-day -day working life have changed. For example, Regular team meetings to discuss tasks, deadlines, workloads and allow time for questions can no longer be carried out in person, therefore have to be done virtually. Training courses and networking events, which were usually held in office meeting rooms or conference centres, are now not possible in person and again have to be carried out virtually. The way that teams and companies socialise and get to know each other has changed. For example, in 2020, there were obviously no in-person festive events. Employees don't have access to the same equipment that was available to them in the office. For example, a printer with phones, large monitors and suitable desks and chairs to work from. In roles where employees work directly with clients or customers, it is important to build and maintain strong relationships and prior to virtual working, the majority of this was done face to face and may have included travelling to different cities or countries. What does this mean for the future? On recording this, the situation with COVID-19 remained ever changing. The future for ways of working is still uncertain. However, many businesses have already said that they do not envisage all staff returning to the office on a full-time basis and that an element of virtual working will remain. We're now going to explore possible advantages and disadvantages of virtual working. So examples of advantages. Less commuting means cost and time savings for employees and is more environmentally friendly. Less overheads for companies in the long term, for example, rent, less renting large office spaces. Some people would say that they're more productive at home because of less distractions. More opportunities for employees and employers. For example, the pool of available roles or candidates could be larger if employees and employers are not restricted by a geographical location. 
Examples of disadvantages. Communicating and building relationships with, in, with colleagues can be more difficult. So working from home may feel more isolating. Lack of suitable workspace. For example, many people have to work from their bedrooms or communal living areas. Some people would say that they're more distracted at home with family or friends being around and household jobs to complete. Lack of exercise and fresh air due to not commuting to and from the office daily. Technology can also be problematic. Although companies can provide laptops, employees often rely on their home Wi-Fi to be able to work. We're now going to hear from some young people from Phoenix Group who changed from office to virtual working due to COVID-19. Hi everybody, how are we doing today? Um, <laughs> thanks for coming along to this. Um, so uh, you guys are all part of our early careers program at Phoenix. Tell me, how did you deal with moving from office working to remote working from home? Um, well, obviously it's like completely different because instead of traveling in, you're just, you know, going downstairs or in a separate room or whatever. But um, the main thing was sort of just finding a different way to like ask questions and ask for support from people because you couldn't just turn around and be like, hey, can you help me with this? You had to either IM them or email them or even phone them sometimes. Yeah, is generally what I thought. Yeah, that's spot on. Um, so, uh, no, I think everybody was in a similar position uh, in that regard. But Carrie, especially you guys being so new and it being your first jobs, it was really important to have that support there that you can ask questions, and, and that is that is important. Um, so, um, what, um, ladies, what would you see as the the positives? What are the positives for you for working from home? Um. You don't have to spend money on transport and also not have to spend up to like four hours in the bus every wow. day. That's, that's, that's a very valid point because if we're traveling in and out, that's going to save a lot of money on that. And also yeah. time, like you said. Mm. Anybody else got any positives from working from home? Um, you get the working from home allowance. You can work in clothes that you're comfortable and you don't have to go in in office clothes and you're working more independently so I encourage you to learn more and be more independent other than relying on other people all the time. And that's a good point Chloe, excellent. Uh, what would you say were the challenges? How did the, what challenges did you encounter working from home? So being part of the early careers obviously this is like my first full-time job and it was just sort of having to get into a new routine. You're obviously used to getting up early and going to the like the wait for the bus or a drive or however you get to work. So it was really for me learning new tasks. You weren't able to be sat beside somebody and they can't just show you and then you can then do it. We were having to share screens so obviously if someone was having internet problems and the screen all of a sudden freezes that's the sort of meeting being held up and then you almost lose your track of thought and think oh where were they actually going with this point or what do I do next. So I have been in that situation so there's been quite a lot of video calls that I've had that have broken up so there has been a lot of times that that's happened to me. Yeah, um, it's a good point actually, because obviously when um, like Phoenix provided us all with kit, um, with you know the hardware that we needed to work from home, which was which was excellent. But um, any time we've had problems, we're lucky that we have an IT um, support facility within the company that helps us with that. So, so that's you know, but sometimes it's it's down to the Wi-Fi at home as well. Yeah. Thanks, Gem. Anybody else? Anybody else have any kind of challenges about working from home? Working um, from home? I, there's quite been quite a few challenges because it's a first time for everyone really working from home full time. Um, not necessarily all work related because there's there's things like not having the social interaction that you'd have in the office every day. Um, someone I know started a new job actually, and they were sitting having a beer for their birthday with the manager they'd never met in person before, and they just thought it was it was quite odd that you've just not met people in real life and you're kind of talking to them every day online. Um, there's been a lot of distractions as well. Like I know my, my um, biggest kind of challenge around remote working was being distracted and just having the TV next to you. Oh, just switch that on because nobody's watching. You just think you can do that stuff, but you need to get kind of get your head in the game and 
and focus and be able to do that. Um, interruptions have been a big one kind of on online meetings, blue jeans that we've been using. I've got a very vocal dog, so he's been barking a lot in all my meetings and there's people that have had babies crying, answering the door to post. It's just, you get, these things have been accepted now. It's pretty normal. So it's just kind of, this is going to be the way going forward, I think. So it was a challenge at first, but people have began to accept them. How did you choose kind of where you were going to work and what were the kind of things you thought about where you needed to keep in mind when, it, when you're, you know, in video meetings with people at work and considering your, your home environment where you set up your, your office, so to speak? I think what Amy had said about the distractions, like finding somewhere that's not distraction, distracting for you, like I know having people in and out where I work every day is quite distracting and then just having the telly beside, behind you and the window so you can just sit for five minutes doing nothing and you're thinking, oh God, I need to get back to work. So I think it's the, definitely the distractions, finding somewhere that's nice and quiet. Okay. Any other considerations when thinking about the where you're going to set up your work space? I think I'm quite lucky because I managed to have got a spare room that I could work in so I was kind of not in my bedroom with all my stuff but I think I had to kind of, I've got a little sister that during the day I sometimes have to help her with her schooling and things when people are out so I kind of had to pick a place that was big enough for us both that she could kind of play but not sort of be involved in the meetings and things. Yeah, no, that's a, a really valid point. Like, um, I'm doing this today from, this is my son's bedroom, so you can see the bed in the back. So I had to very quickly make the bed before we came on this meeting. Um, so just keeping things like that in consideration when you're, when you're thinking about it, if, if you have to use your bedroom for the space. Thank you all. Some really interesting points. So let's just recap on what we've covered. Virtual working is here to stay. We've looked at what this means in practice and we've identified some of the disadvantages and advantages. We've listened to young people telling us about their experience of virtual working. Our next session focuses on working virtually. Thanks for listening.